Thanks for thanks for staying, guys. I know what it's like to be done class and want to go home. So I appreciate the fact that you guys you know have an interest in uh, in this. And I think it's a topic that is really worth you know sticking around for and, and listening to. And you know if there's anything you want to add or any questions you guys have along the way, I'm not scripted um, to be honest with you at all. So you know feel free to ask anything, throw up your hand, shout out a question. Um, you know I'm here for you guys. So whatever whatever I can do to help you answer some questions you might have, I'm happy to do. So um, yeah. So like Theo mentioned. Um, my name is David Brooke. Um, he mentioned I, I came from the modeling and acting industry. And just to give you, I guess, understanding of maybe why I'm here today talking about skin and maybe why you should, you know, hear me out on it is, uh, you know, I guess, I hate to date myself. I guess it's about 18, 18 years ago almost, 17, 18 years ago, I got, I got taken into the, the, the industry. And uh, to be honest, I never wanted to be a part of it. I, I thought it was silly. I thought it was kind of a hoax. Um, it turned out not to be. Um, but I actually had bad skin. And I noticed that a lot of the jobs that my, my agents expected I would be booking, I wasn't booking because my skin, right? So I actually, I got introduced to Skin Essence Organics about 18 years ago. The line's been around for over 20. Um, and it completely changed my skin and it, it really wowed me. I was like, I was very impressed that, you know, for the first time I'm using something that actually makes a difference on my skin. And then the more I thought about it, I realized why, you know, it's real ingredients, just like with your diet. You know, I tell people all the time, if you want to be full, you can eat a bag of chips, but you can also eat a salad, but you only get healthy from the salad. So you can be full and healthy from a salad, but just full from a bag of chips. The same sort of thing with skincare. You get moisturized from a lot of things but you only really get nourished and feed your skin using things that have vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, like nutrients, right? Um, you can't get real results from ingredients that aren't real, you know? The skincare industry too, just to let you guys know, and we'll go through a lot of this as, as I talk, but um, do you know how, how many pages, for example, or, or who regulates um, the, the Canadian and the US uh, skincare industry? Have you guys ever, do you know about that? Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because sometimes like I'll ask like how many pages people are like oh 80 pages of regulation and then it, the, the, the truth is actually there's there's one page and there's there's no it's a self-regulated industry so although you know it's very important what you eat in the food industry obviously you know being a mindful consumer um, in some ways it's just as and even maybe some ways even more important what you're putting on your body because Obviously, we have Health Canada, not to say that they do a fantastic job, but there is Health Canada, there is a regulating body. In the skincare industry, it's, it's self-regulated. So that means that a lot of the ingredients that are in, like I'm talking thousands of the ingredients that are in personal care products, have never actually even been tested. A lot of them got grandfathered in after the Second World War, which we'll talk about here um, in the presentation. So I'll, I think the presumption by the general public is that they oversee it and they take care of us and they protect us, but who is they? There is no they, right? Like, uh, you know, guys like Trudeau, like they don't understand this industry, right? And a lot of them just shy away from even addressing that topic, right? Um, you see a lot of issues with um, people in infertility, um, cancers, different types of, uh, you know, mental illnesses and stuff. A lot of these types of illnesses are linked to what we're eating and what we're putting on our body. The fastest way into the bloodstream, other than through a needle uh, and under your tongue, is actually through the skin. So it's really important what you're putting on your body. And another thing too, when you eat something unhealthy, just to kind of help you understand, I guess, how this relates to holistic nutrition um, and, and to you and your future career, but when you eat something unhealthy, you do have a natural defense, right? You have the gut, right? Whereas when you put something unhealthy on your skin, it goes through the skin into the bloodstream, right? So it's more direct way into your body. It bypasses the liver and the kidneys. So it's really important to just be mindful of, of you know, what it is that you know, we're putting on our bodies. Um, so just, because I'll, 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 I want to be mindful of your time, and I know some people do have questions about like, our products as well. I'll skip through some of these a little bit quicker. Um, so obviously, you know, the scientific aspects of the skin, I think we all kind of understand, but there is three layers of skin, right? There's the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. Actually, this is a good opportunity for me to explain creams versus oils. Okay, because I know a lot of times people are like, oh, I wouldn't use an oil, it'd make me break out, or I only use an oil, I wouldn't use a cream, and vice versa. And a lot of times people don't really understand the difference. Short answer is, your skin naturally makes oils, not creams. The reason why most companies make a cream is because it's the cheapest way to make a product. To make a cream, you use water, waxes, emulsifiers, preservatives, and oils. There is oils in almost most creams, most creams, right? Um, 
depending on how conventional they might be. But the thing is with, with a certified organic plant oil, like, like our product, for example, it's 100% pure plant extracts. So the reason why a lot of companies won't do what we do is because we're 100% at the mercy of nature, right? If you want to really mass produce and, and make a massive profit, you know, using something that's 60 to 80% water, a formula that's got 60 to 80% water in it, is, is definitely the way to go. The problem is, as soon as you use water, you have to use preservatives because water makes natural things go rancid, right? So with us, we, we stay away from water, any sort of chemicals, stabilizers, preservatives, synthetic fragrances. It's literally, if it doesn't grow or come from the earth, then it's not in our product, right? So when you're looking at like a cream versus an oil, think about this. When you're putting a cream on your skin, right? You have three layers of skin, the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, right? You're putting a cream on your skin. Actually, we'll pretend that this is the, the three layers of skin, right? The cream's gonna sit on the surface and drop the bottle. <laughs> but the good news is it's durable. See? Perfect, man. Takes a lick and keeps on taking its glass on the inside. But we use a stainless steel shell on the outside, so that's good. Uh, anyways, so you put a cream. The cream sits on the surface, right? In the middle layer of your skin, in the dermis, is the sebaceous glands. Those are the oil-producing glands. Their job, when they detect the skin as being dry, is to send messages to the brain saying, we need to create oil. And then oil is secreted. But if there's a cream sitting on the top, the oil can't get out. Right? Because the cream's clogging it. Right? So that's how a lot of people end up with, like, that have acne or oily prone skin, end up with blackheads and breakouts and pimples and, and such because they're, they're using a cream to hydrate. And what happens is their, their skin is going to continue to try to secrete, like, secrete sebum thinking that it's dry. But if you use an oil, the oil goes into the skin, it hydrates around those glands, achieves the pH balance that everyone talks about that makes oils or the, the sebaceous glands not need to create more oil. So actually, if you have oily prone skin or dry skin, using an oil is better because from dry skin perspective, you're getting a deep, richer hydration. From an oily perspective, if you give your skin what it's lacking, it's not gonna try to create more of it, right? And there's also other things too that we would use like geranium flower, for example, that naturally helps to control oil production, right? So long story short, when you're, when, you're using, when you're using an oil on your skin, you're hydrating your skin the way your skin hydrates your skin, right? There's no fillers, it's, it's more concentrated. Another thing too is a cream is one consistency, right? Spring, winter, fall, you know, you guys might, for example, buy a certain one in the summer and a different one in the winter, right? Because a cream is always just one consistency. It might be perfect for you and way too heavy for, for one of you, right? Um, the difference with an oil is you might use one pump two pumps, three pumps, four pumps, you might mix it with a little bit of water. You can customize it. It's customizable, right? Cool. And another thing too, you know, when, when you're looking at, you know, conventional products and I obviously going to the, um, the Institute of Holistic Nutrition, clearly you guys have a, a very strong interest in organic and chemical free living. But I get asked this question a lot too, where people will say, well, if what you guys do is so great, then why doesn't every company do it? And the short answer is, can you think of it actually? Expensive. expensive. That's the first one people always go to, but there's another reason because technically, if it was expensive, which it is, it's, it's expensive, but you could just say, well, instead of selling it for, you know, 20, 30 bucks like we do, because we compete on pricing, you could just sell it for 80 bucks and just pump a bunch of marketing money into it and people are still going to buy it, right? So that is definitely one of the reasons, but it wouldn't be the main one. Um, the main reason, can anyone think of it? I have a guess. Yeah. Is it because it's less effective, it makes you actually buy more? That's, that's a good question. So yes, companies do use petroleum-based ingredients, for example. Um, Burt's Bees used to be great, then they got bought by Clorox like eight years ago. And they do have petroleum now in like their lipsticks and lip balms, which does make the skin dependent on oils. That, that's definitely true. The main reason why companies don't do what we do is because we are 100% at the mercy of nature. Right? Most big corporations are at the mercy of their, their, their shareholders. So it's all about being able to make stuff for as cheap as you can and mass produce it to every Walmart, to every department store around the world. With us, we're in over a thousand locations and we're continuing to grow, but we're never going to be able to be a company that's completely worldwide in all the major outlets because there's not gonna be enough harvest from nature, right? So a lot of companies like, you know, Procter Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Estee Lauder, L'Oreal, they're, they're never gonna go down this route because they know that you, you, they don't wanna be at the mercy of whether or not there's enough rose hip or if a hurricane hits Chile and they can't get the rose hip to make their products, you know, or jojoba from Panama, for example, right? So, but for us, for us limiting, limiting our potential growth 
for, for offering you know, a, a really good, clean, healthy, safe product, that's important, you know? Um, cool, any questions? Yeah? yeah if you're limited resources, how do you deal with sustainability? Yeah, so, so basically we have a variety of different um, farmers that we've worked with. We've been around for over 20 years. So before um, organic skincare products were even cool, um, we've been doing it. Um, so before you know any of these natural baselines that you're going to see in, in the health stores, we, we've been around. So we do have a variety. Like for example, in the summer, you know we'll buy our sweet orange extract from from Italy, and you know we'll go further south in the winter and get it from a place like Morocco, for example, in the winter, right? So there's different different areas around the world that you can source organic raw material at different times of the year. Um, another thing too, because a lot of times people ask me as well, like we are made in Canada, you know, our packaging, our boxes are all made in Canada, we're local, but we do get our ingredients from around the world because number one, greenhouses are hard on the environment, but number two, there's also something to be said about ingredients grown in their in their indigenous areas, right? Like there's certain areas around the world that are going to grow, you know, better quality rosehip, better quality neroli extract and jasmine flower extract and certain herbs come better from India, certain herbs come better from Oregon State in the United States. So we do source them all around the world and they're all brought in to the US and into Canada, certified by USDA and then put into our products. So, but yeah, Sustainability, it is, it is one of those things, you know, you, you, it's, it's sustainable farming is, is also something that, you know, when you're, when you're buying, we also go by fair trade as well. So we do pay a little bit extra for our, our, for our ingredients to make sure that, you know, everyone's being treated fairly along the way. Um, I think ethics is something that lacks in a lot of companies, um, but it's very important to our clientele base for sure. And it's important to us. So, yeah. Um, Cool, so I took you guys through a little bit to do with, with the skin. Um, and as you know too, like the skin has um, a variety of different roles, right? For, for protecting you against UV rays, um, pathogens, water loss, regulating body temperature. I don't need to sell you on the fact that, that your skin's important, right? And, and a lot of times too, if you wanna have great skin, it's not just using great skincare products, it's also having a great diet, getting your sleep, drinking lots of water, you know, there's a, all those all those things encompass and go hand in hand to, to really having a, a, a true healthy self. You know, um, there's the old saying about you can judge a book by its cover, but it's true because or you are what you eat. You know, it, it is true. If, if you want to be healthy, you got to make healthy choices. And um, and obviously with with the skin, it's it's something that, uh, you know, plays plays a, a, a outermost role for us as well. Right. I mean, people can oftentimes judge someone's health by, by like, the textures of their skin and the vibrance of their eyes and their hair and such. And it's, uh, um, yeah. So with, with different skin types, we have, we have dry, oily, and sensitive. Do you guys know what your skin type is, by the way? Yeah? Is everyone pretty comfortable like knowing if they're dry or combination or oily or acne? No? Yeah? Somewhat? No? It's funny. I always get, it's usually a mix. You know, some people do, some people don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, it also, it can change by seasons too, right? So, you know, a certain, like for example, we have like a moisturizer, right? For uh, dry aging skin called Neroli extract, like, or Neroli. And we also have one called Nourish, right? So Nourish is for combination aging, Neroli is for dry aging. So it's actually using, these two use the same ingredients, but the formula is slightly different to make one richer for the skin and the other one a little bit lighter, a little more combination for the skin. Um, and that's the thing is your skin type can change based on the seasons but it can also change based on just age and time, right? The skin can, can, can lack moisture and, and need a little bit more hydration, you know, as, as time goes on. Um, and, and understanding your skin type and, and how to moisturize your skin properly and, and cleanse your skin properly is something that is, is, is very important because if you're using obviously the wrong product, you might notice that your skin's either A, not getting hydrated enough or B, it's getting too congested. So um, when it comes to, to dry skin, obviously it, it's people that feel like they're lacking moisture. You know, they might have redness or flaking aspects. Especially people with dry skin, it's really important to use, you know, a really rich oil on the skin because oils will go into the skin and give that deep, rich hydration. So, um, and then eczema, do any of you guys have eczema or rosacea? No? No? It's actually really common. I think as you, you know, graduate and go into practicing, you're going to probably notice a lot of uh, your clients coming to you with eczema issues or, or issues where they have like redness and rosacea. It's important to know with eczema, eczema is an internal condition. Do you guys know much about eczema? 
kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Eczema is, ex eczema is an internal condition, right? Oftentimes related to the food that you might be eating. So if you do have a client in the future that has eczema, there is topical applications. We have a product that helps with the itch, the irritation, and in theory shouldn't cure it, but it, it actually does. It gets completely rid of eczema. But eczema is something you know that you really want to focus on on your on your clients with um, with dairy in their diet, with wheat, with excess sugar. But it, it's usually dairy is the culprit, and a lot of times people when you when you approach them about it, they might say, "Oh well, you know, I like I like ice cream, and you know, I, I want to still drink some milk, and, and you know." And what you really got to ask them is, "Okay, do you prefer more the eczema?" Or do you prefer more <laughs> the glass of milk? Because sometimes, I know it sounds funny, it, it almost sounds cheeky, but, it, but it's true. Because a lot of times, it, it, it tends to be dairy linked to the eczema. So people want to have the glass of milk, but they don't want the, the red, inflamed, itchy, irritated problem skin. So it's really important if your clients do have you know, skin conditions, especially like that, that you do address you know, their diet, obviously. And, and getting them, you know, even, even if you can approach them and say, Take two weeks or three weeks, you know, to completely cut it out. See what happens, you know? And oftentimes they're gonna notice that, is that time out? I have to get to you. Um, they're, they're gonna notice that, that their skin is going to improve. They're probably not gonna have a flare up and they're probably gonna realize that they do have an intolerance to, you know, um, ingredients such as dairy. Do you guys know how to use those? <laughs> <laughs> Is it good or something? Um, what about acne? Do you recommend one of those for people with acne? Yeah, so people with acne-prone skin, a lot of times, if, if they're in their teenage years, it's oftentimes hormonal changes. Um, but a lot of times, too, if people went once... Perfect, it came back on. That's so strange. <laughs> it's like I like stepped on the uh, controller, but it was in the drawer. Um, yeah, so, so acne-prone skin um, is something, like I mentioned, it, it can be hormonal. Um, changes, but it's also a lot of times people not using the right products. A lot of times people have congestion or they have a poor diet, right? Because a lot of times if you're if you're consuming food that doesn't agree with your body or isn't really offering great nutrition, yeah, it came back on. Yeah, we're yeah. good. It, well, they knew you were coming. They're like, uh oh, the guy didn't know what he's doing is coming. Uh oh, I just presume you know what you're doing. But, yeah. yeah. Awesome, but um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things too. Like using, like for example, in the light moisturizer. Do you guys want to actually smell a product here, real quick? Yeah. I'll let you smell the one for acne oily prone skin while um, Theo gets that set up. Because there's a, a quick little video that I want you guys to watch as well. Um, but this one, for example, just talking about acne. Um, anyone have acne here? Feel like acne concerns? Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like your skin? With, those who have acne, who feels like their skin's oily and who feels like their skin's more dry? Both, like oily on the teeny. Yep. Okay, yeah. Yeah. more combination. If your skin's kind of, if you're someone that's like, okay, I definitely, if, if you would ask yourself this question, do I need a moisturizer? And if so, is it like the lightest, the possible, like lightest possible is the best for me? Or if you're someone that's like, no, I have acne, but I definitely need a moisture, then what you're doing is you're not hydrating your skin properly. Because if you're using, um, for example, a skin that lacks moisture is gonna have like little cracks that are gonna happen in the epidermis thin cracks you're not even gonna really even be able to see, right? But it allows like pathogens, dirt, bacteria to enter which can cause breakouts, right? So if you have drier skin, it's really important to hydrate your skin properly because hydrated skin is gonna get the pH balance and allow the skin to not ob obviously have like the, the little fractures in, in the epidermis. But also um, when the skin's dry, it can feel raw and it can also break out as well, right? Whereas if someone has really oily prone skin, like this one for acne, oily prone skin, actually I'll, I'll let you guys just kind of I'll just kind of give it a little spot. You can just try it here. It actually, to me, it smells like a spa. So in this, it's, it smells like, a, it's got eucalyptus, lavender, lemongrass, tea tree, geranium flower. All these ingredients have natural antiseptic. Yeah, antibacterial and antifungal properties. So it actually helps to keep the skin clean here. You'll actually see how it absorbs really well into the skin too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another thing too guys, when you're, when you're shopping for your skincare products, it's important to ask yourself, would I eat this? And it's not to say that you're going to sit there and open the bottle and chug it, but if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, it shouldn't be something that you're going to put on your skin either, right? You should be able to pronounce the ingredients. You'll notice that the way a lot of um, skincare industries, or skincare uh, brands, sorry, um, label their products is, yeah, no worries, man. Um, is they'll actually do English Latin, English Latin, you ever see that, like scrambling the ingredient list? A lot of times they do that because you have to have Latin, 
right, to sell internationally, which we have Latin, but we've broken it. We have English paragraph, French paragraph, Latin paragraph. So it's broken up so that it's easy to read. So you have all the English ones together. The reason why a lot of companies will do, um, you know, the, the scattered form is because it confuses you. don't know if it's Latin, if it's a chemical or whatever, or you presume it's Latin, and then you just put it down and you're just like, oh, whatever, it says we're going to buy it, you know? It, it, it's, it's true, you know, just being very transparent, it, it's really important to be able to have, be easily able to, to read the ingredients, right? So, you guys all have like your herbal green teas and everything, that's good. I'm a big tea guy myself. David? Yeah. Uh, it's all on the volumes, just on that far one. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. So it might blare when I turn it on. Thanks, Theo. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, no problem. There you go. Yeah. Do you guys, do you see the smell? So that's the thing is too. Another thing that I want to talk to you guys though, which we're going to get to anyway, like throughout the talk, is um, fragrances. Because a lot of times people are like, you know, sensitive to fragrances, or they're like, oh, I can't, like that's got too much smell to it. But the difference is, this is real plant smells. This is organic essential oils. So it's not, it, it's not, it's very different than synthetic fragrances are, which we'll, we'll talk about here as we go through. Um, any of you, if you smell like cologne or perfume or things that are highly fragranced, do you guys get like runny nose, teary eyes, migraines? Yeah. yeah? It's super common. It's actually the, se the second, the second, um, how do I explain this? The second most allergic thing is, is fragrances. The second most thing that people are allergic to is fragrances. Um, and a lot of times they don't even really know that. So a lot of times people will use certain products and their skin is gonna flare up and their nose starts to run and their eyes start to water. And oftentimes it is linked to, uh, to fragrances, which is one thing I actually have notes here I wanna actually take you guys through. So here as well, when you take a look at this, um, at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, but it says the average female is exposed to a mixture of 200 toxic chemicals in her daily routine. Men are an average of 100 because guys tend to use a little bit less personal care products. Um, studies have shown that teens are even at higher risk to exposure. So you might look at that and be like 200 chemicals, there's no way that I am. But a lot of times fragrances alone can be composed of literally hundreds, sometimes even a thousand different chemicals, components that are actually in just a fragrance, right? So um, when you take a look at the bottom, it says from a sample of 1,029 people, but I found this a very interesting uh, point, 1,029 people studied by the FDA, so Food and Drug Administration in the United States, every single one of them tested positive for phthalates in their blood and urine. So that basically statistically says that we, we all have them, right? And phthalates, as we go through it, you'll understand that they're hormone disruptors, they're endocrine um, you know, uh, concerns around that, uh, carcinogenic as well. Um, and that's the thing with, um, with um, let me just pull this right up. This is one thing actually I wanna, I wanna read to you guys actually about phthalates. Fragrances, okay, so with, with, with synthetic fragrances, right? So you'll see actually, let me get to this in one second, actually. So concerns with conventional skincare. So chemicals, preservatives used to keep uh, uh, keep stable are linked to adverse health effects. So a lot of a lot of uh, companies, the reason why they're using chemicals and preservatives and stabilizers and stuff is obviously to help preserve products. Um, alcohols and other additives are commonly used to synthetically increase absorption and kill bacteria, but typically cause skin dehydration. So a lot of companies are using things like like chemicals or preservatives as a way to keep a long shelf life, right? A lot of companies want to be able to mass produce products, put them in a warehouse, sell them to a distribution center who then sells them to Walmart, which then sits on their shelf for three or four months before you buy it. It has to last for multiple years, right? Back in the day, you know, over a hundred years ago, skincare products used to be made in smaller batches. You know, they used to be made where they did have a shelf life. Shelf life's not, not, a, not a bad thing. In fact, it, a company should be proud of that. Now, that being said too, do you, have you ever wondered, because I know a lot of times people ask about, um, you know, organic products and shelf life and how long they last. Most organic products are good for about two to five years, our products. So they're not really that bad. A lot of times people think like, okay, well, if it's organic, then I got to use it in like two or three months. Our, package, our packages will say to use within uh, six months of opening, but unopened, they're good for multiple years. Even, even once opened, a lot of our stuff is good for, you know, anywhere from two to five years. The reason why we say six months is because we don't know if you're going to leave it in a hot car or if you're going to leave it in direct uh, windowsill or if you're going to allow water to get into the package, for example. But un, you know, unexposed to any of those elements, uh, an organic product is going to be super stable. The issue that most companies run into, natural products, is because they're bottling in plastic. 
right? As opposed to glass. So oxygen can get in and out of the package, right? But then they're also using water as their main ingredient. Water makes natural things go rancid, right? So we stay away from water altogether. It's all, it, it's also if you heat extract oils, right? Heat extract oils, a lot of companies will heat extract oils because you make more profit. When you heat an oil, like a plant extract, and you extract it, you get a lot more yield, you get a lot more product off of it. Whereas cold pressing, you're ultimately, in a sense, putting it in a stainless steel vat, it's being literally pressure pressed squeeze right out. The benefit of doing it, and that's how we do it, the benefit of doing it that way is if, for example, if rosehip seed oil is so great for the skin and rosehip offers, you know, beta carotene, vitamin C, natural antioxidants, then don't mess with it. You know, a lot of companies want to use either gas extraction methods or they want to use heat extraction methods because you're able to either get a longer shelf life as opposed to two years, which the rosehip would be. You can get two and a half, three years if you're using other extraction methods, right? So like a lot of companies like, uh, do you guys know Cosmea? Cause my other rose hip seed, yeah, they sell rose hip. Anyways, they come from, from Austria or uh, Australia. And I get asked this question all the time, like what's the difference between our rose hip and the difference between like Cosmeas, right? And, and the short answer is uh, theirs is done in Australia, ours is done in Canada. Our stuff is shipped directly to the health store. So we use a cold pressing method. They use gas, they do uh, gas and oxygen. So it's a CO2 extraction, which gives an extra six months. And they do that because obviously they have to extract it in Australia, ship it on a boat to Vancouver to Purity Life, which is a distributor. I don't know if you guys have heard of them or not. And then they then sell it to the health stores and, and then obviously to the consumer. But by doing CO2 extraction, it's, it's, you're not extracting the plant in the way, like in its most raw natural state. The best thing, if, have you guys ever used rosehip before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the best way to actually use rosehip is, I mean, if you could afford to, it'd be very expensive to fly to Chile, go into a field of rosehip and squeeze it on your face, right? But obviously that's not economical, that's not practical, logistically it wouldn't work, right? So what we do is we, we import the rosehip and we cold press it and we put it in UV amber glass. So when you're shopping for your skincare products, it is really important to, to ensure that they are done in glass. And for example, water bottles, right? People say you should drink out of stainless steel or glass and, and not plastic, right? Because of leaching from chemicals found in plastic and so on, which is very true. Water does not pull chemicals from plastic as easily as essential oils do and plant extracts. So what you're putting on your face, your skincare products should definitely be done in glass because glass is not only gonna protect the ingredients from UV light, there's no oxygen, right? You can't squeeze it. There's no oxygen, that it doesn't compress and expand but it also, the UV amber glass protects the ingredients from UV light. So a lot of times, you know, for example, with rosehip, and I use that as an example because there's different companies that sell rosehip, but it's kind of like going to the grocery store and getting peas, right? You can get fresh peas, you can get frozen peas, and you can get canned peas, right? So if you had fresh, frozen, and canned, sorry, can, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, just, just, just in order, does that work? You know, you might be like, well, we all ate peas for dinner, right? But the difference is she had fresh peas. Frozen peas would be probably the second best, and canned peas, obviously there's preservatives, stabilizers, there, they could have been picked you know, two, year, two or three years ago, right? Um, so some people might say, well, peas are peas, but at the end of the day, when you, when you really break it down, you can understand that how something, for example, is extracted and how it's packaged really does make a difference. You know, by using uh, an organic line that is water-based, because water is something that is allowed in organic products, but then you have to chase it with preservatives and so on, you're getting something that's more, more diluted, not as concentrated, right? Um, what we do at Skin Essence, our focus is to keep the plant ingredients in their most raw natural state so that you get vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, so you actually get a nutritional content. Um, but also synthetic ingredients you'll see here and heat extracted plant oils offer minimal, minimal nutrition. So the more processing you go through, the less nutrition you have. For example, um, a salad or a stir fry, you have the exact same ingredients, right? What's better for you? The salad, right? Why? Because that's the ingredients in their most raw, natural state. Another thing too, to give an example of shelf life, is if you take those exact same ingredients, if I had a salad and a stir fry sitting on a counter and I left it there for a day and I said, oh, I got some food on the counter, go in and grab it, you're probably not gonna touch the stir fry if it hasn't been in the fridge, right? It's probably gonna start smelling weird, it's gonna go off. It's because plant ingredients lose their stability as soon as you start to change them from their raw natural state. But if you look at the salad, cold pressed plant oils, right? They're more stable. They're left in their more, it's most raw natural state. So um, water and mineral oils are typically used as filling agents as well, right? So, you know, that's the thing is a, a lot of times people presume that 
when you read a package, for example, if you're in like um, you know a health a health or wellness store, for example, you read a package that says anti-aging this or helps with dark circles or puffiness or or you know acne prone skin, you know all these different tag words you're going to see on a package to draw you in. Read the ingredients and understand if or you know t- take thought in whether or not those ingredients are actually you know going to be beneficial and actually going to you know nourish your skin and because the skincare industry in, in Canada and the U.S can make claims like we we can say pretty much what we want to say on our packages to sell our products to customers so it's really important like i said to really look at the ingredients and be like okay so it says that it's really good for for anti-aging flip it over and you know see if it has ingredients that has vitamin c beta carotene vit- you know antioxidants vitamin it should have a lot of nutritional benefit and not just water and synthetic fragrance um so parabens phthalates so do you guys know sorting laura sulfate sls they call it yeah okay there's a couple of things that I, um, okay, so first of all, with, with sodium lauryl sulfate, there's no regulation in Canada for the use of sodium lauryl sulfate, and companies use it. Do you, do you know what it's used for? Soaps. Soaps, and yeah, making things bubbly, like face washes, shampoos, okay? It's interesting because when you look at, I actually, I actually wrote down a couple things, which I don't usually go scripted, but there's some things I really, I actually got this from uh, Dave, David Suzuki's website. Do you know the Dirty Dozen? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. So th- this is the, the source. So first of all, sodium lauryl sulfate is banned in the entire European Union. Cannot use it. And it's not banned here in Canada or the US. Any idea why? First of all, it's a self-regulated industry here. But the big thing is, we're at the mercy of like huge corporations. There's lobbyist groups that we have in the United States, and we pretty much follow the US with a lot of like regulation and policy and stuff like that. So. Pharmaceutical companies want to be able to use it because they want to be able to make something cheap that's going to soap, lather up. Because a lot of people say, oh, with cleansers, like our cleansers will get a bit of a lather, but they're not going to soap and bubble up. And a lot of people associate when they wash their face with that dry, tight crack, they're like, yeah, man, my face feels really clean. <laughs> no, man, your, your skin's stripped, you know? The whole point of washing your face is to remove dirt, oil, makeup, pollution, not to completely dehydrate your skin. But the issue is, is companies like, or not companies, um, ingredients like sodium lauryl sulfate, not only are very cheap additives, but what they're gonna do, yeah, they're gonna wash your face, they're gonna cleanse your face, but they're gonna dehydrate your skin, which can also cause things like fine lines, broken capillaries, redness, dehydration in general, right? So um, with sodium lauryl sulfate as well, um, this is one thing I wanted to, to read actually is, it says depending on the manufacturing process, sodium lauryl sulfate may be contaminated with measurable amounts of ethylene oxide. The International Agency of Research on Cancer claims ethanol oxide as a known human carcinogen and, a, and um, ethylene oxide can also harm the nervous system and the California Environmental Protection Agency has classified it as a possible developmental toxin based on the evidence that it interferes with human development. So it's interesting to hear all these, you know, big or these, these countries that are doing these studies on stuff. But yet when you look down below, it says Health Canada has categorized, Thank see you buddy, good to see you again, amen? Yeah, has categorized sodium lauryl sulfate as a moderate human health priority and has flagged it for future assessment under the government's uh, chemical management plan. So long story short, they know all of this about it and they flagged it as a moderate human health problem for future assessment. So the moral to that story is you really got to be mindful of what you're using. It does matter. Organic, chemical free, all this stuff is not a hoax. You look around and we're all affected by health issues maybe of our own or definitely within our family. Cancer is a word that you can't say and not relate to to every single person probably sitting in this room. And it's not a coincidence. A lot of these a lot of these illnesses are linked to our lifestyles and our product choices and the options that consumers have. Take care, right? yeah, yeah, no worries, yeah, yeah. Um, also, when you look at this, so for example, parabens, you guys have all heard the word parabens, you guys understand what parabens are used for and what they're all about, because a lot of times people say, oh, stay away from parabens, but, and you're like, well, why, you know? This, this is why. So anyways, parabens, okay, so you'll see here, they're, they're basically found in every single personal care product. Obviously not ours, we're USDA certified, we can't be, and we would never use that. But parabens are one of the most common preservatives. Parabens are, are known to disrupt hormone function and, um, and an effect that is linked to increased risk of breast cancer and reproductive toxicity. So parabens here, like this is from the David Suzuki website, it says parabens are the most widely used preservative in, in cosmetics. 
They are also used in fragrance ingredients, but consumers won't find them listed on the label. Fragrances recipes are considered a trade secret, so manufacturers are not required to disclose fragrance chemicals in, in, in the list of ingredients. An estimated 75 to 90% of cosmetics contain parabens. So basically what, what organizations have done and lobbyists have done is, is they've said, our, one of our trade secrets in our personal care products is our fragrances. It's how our products smell because consumers buy based on smell. Sounds stupid, our stuff smells good too, but we're not about the smell. The interesting thing is they use fragrances to, to scientifically draw you and, and, and grab your attention, right? When you smell something a certain way, they know how to manipulate it and they can make it smell the exact same every single time. But that's not normal. Your garden smell, smells different. That's awesome you're reading the French brochure. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah. Um, your garden smells different spring, summer, winter, fall, right? A bouquet of flowers you get well, might smell different in a week. Your organic personal care products should have a slight fluctuation too, even though the formula is the exact same. You know, if the eucalyptus is, is harvested in the spring as opposed to the summer, it's gonna have a little bit of a different smell. If the comfrey is harvested, it might be a little bit darker in the summer than it is in the winter, for example, right? So there's, there's different variations to herbs and extracts, and that's normal. You know, when you get a personal care product, it, it should have that slight fluctuation, right? Um, so just reading on with that, it says parabens easily penetrate the skin. The European Commission of Endocrine uh, Disruption has listed parabens as a category one priority substance based on the evidence that it interferes with hormone function. Parabens can mimic estrogen, a primary female sex hormone. They have been detected in human breast cancer tissues suggesting possible association. They can never make a direct, direct claim, right? A possible association between parabens in, co in cosmetics and cancer. Parabens may also interfere with male reproductive function. In addition, studies indicate that methylparaben um, applied to the skin with U UVB leading um, to increase skin aging and DNA damage. So what, that, what that's saying is that, okay, have you ever noticed that people from like, you know, developing countries and third world countries don't necessarily have sunspotting the same way that, you know, you'll, you'll notice people from first world countries? Right? You look at a lot of people, especially because women tend to use more personal care products. Once you get in your 40s and 50s, you'll start noticing a lot more age spotting on their hands, on their face. And a lot of people think like, oh, it's the sun that does that. Part of it would be your diet. And yes, in some aspects, it is the sun. But a lot of it is actually a chemical reaction between the personal care products you're using on your face and the UV light, right? So if, if you notice that a lot of people in developing countries, they don't have Procter & Gamble, Johnson Johnson, they're using plant extracts or you know, whatever they can create because they don't have the financial means or, or the, 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 the department stores and things like that to, to actually buy you know, conventional products. But really what you're putting on your skin, it, you know, sunspotting is not necessarily directly associated with the sun, but in fact, oftentimes to the chemicals that sit on your skin that are reacting with the sun, right? So it's important. And that's the thing is, you know, companies don't really want consumers to get smarter because the smarter you get, the more they have to refine their products. And there's only so much that they can really do. And then they become 100% at the mercy of nature, right? So um, it's interesting because another question I get too all the time is, oh, you know, I'm, I'm pregnant or I, I plan on becoming pregnant. Can I use your products because it has some like essential oils in it or it has, you know, is it safe during pregnancy? Short answer is, you should be using a product like this if you're pregnant. You know, the, the industry has, has put like even bloggers and stuff on the internet that will post stuff about essential oils. Yes, if you're gonna take pure essential oils and rub it all over your body, which you would never do because it's so potent, you know, you would never need to do, right? Yeah, it's going to be, it could burn your skin, it could be like very, you know, you know it, it, it could be very irritating to the skin, right? But most companies, I would like to thank all companies that make a product know how to formulate. There's, you know, using essential oils blended with, you know, hoba, apricot kernel, rosehip carrier oils, right? So that you get the right potency, but it's not gonna irritate the skin, right? They're safe. Essential oils are safe for the body. What I would tell people, what I do tell people is that when you become pregnant, you should be very mindful of chemicals and preservatives and synthetic ingredients and parabens and, you know, any sort of ingredient that's going to obviously intoxify the blood, right? So. Um, it, it's interesting too, so just carrying on with, with um, the parabens really quick, it says there's no restrictions on parabens and cosmetics in Canada, so there's no restrictions. So companies can just use them as they like, you know? Um, and then 
it says the international regulations are stronger. The Euro uh, European Union restricts concentration of parabens in cosmetics. So there is a restriction on parabens in cosmetics in Europe, but not in the US and Canada. So we're lagging behind big time. So it's interesting, you know, you can see how, how relevant, you know, parabens and how much you want to avoid them that entire countries, I think there's like 25 or 26 countries in the EU have it banned, but yet our Canada, or like our Canada, our, our country, North America, US and Canada allow it, right? So, um, anyways. Carcinogens, yeah, so this is just a list right here. Um, I don't know, are you guys able to see it okay, or is it too bright? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit bright in here, eh? I have turned off all the lights, and like, all I can do is maybe put something over the windows, but I can't do that. So, um, so carcinogens, so formaldehyde, methylparaben, BHA, BHT. Do you guys know what BHA and BHT is? Companies, companies use them in food and in cosmetics as a preservative, um, and they're linked to uh, cancers and tumors. I actually have something actually written on this. Um, BHA uh, can introduce um, allergic reactions in the skin. The International Agency of Research in Cancer classifies BHA and BHT as a possible human carcinogen. The European Commission of Endocrine Disruption has also listed BHA as a category one priority substance based on evidence that it interferes with hormone and, func uh, and, um, and body function. Long-term long exposure to high doses of BHT is toxic so they did a study in mice, by the way. I know it doesn't seem as relevant, but obviously if it's going to um, cause, it, it, what it says, it, it is toxic in mice and rats causing liver and thyroid and kidney problems and affecting lung function and blood um, coagulation. BHT can act as a tumor promoter in certain situations. Limited evidence also suggests that high doses of BHT may mimic estrogen. Um, the primary uh, female sex hormone and prevent ex um, expression of male sex hormones resulting in adverse reproductive effects. Have you guys noticed, like, I don't know, uh, yeah, I, I guess you would be all, uh, you know, that age where you, you'd know friends and family and, and acquaintances that have had issues with pregnancy? Yeah? It seems pretty common nowadays, does it not? Yeah. So I know my high school group of friends I would say out of my core group of friends, eight of us, at least half of them had issues, one of them still hasn't had a baby. And it's interesting because you look at it and you're like, oh, well, there must be something wrong. That's why like holistic nutrition is so great because if they were introduced to a professional like yourselves, you know, and they change their diet, they change their lifestyle, it, their, their outcomes could be so much different. There's actually a, a girl, and she actually gave me permission to talk about her, I won't say her by name, but she works with our company. I met her 10 years ago, and actually, I, do you guys know Noah's Foods at Young and Eglinton? Okay, I was in there doing an event at Noah's Foods. You didn't meet her, you met a different girl, but I know you met one of our girls from our from our company. So her, um, when I met her, she, she, she never, she had heard about our line, she came to an event that I was at because her naturopathic doctor had suggested that she completely change her lifestyle. She was told that she wasn't gonna be able to have kids. Like that was just it, she's not gonna be able to have kids. If you met this person, you could tell she was born to have children. Like it's just in her, you can tell. Like just her demeanor, you know, her love for kids, her love for people in general. Um, she's very motherly, so it, you know, obviously she didn't want to take no for an answer. So she saw this naturopathic doctor and the naturopathic doctor said, you know what? change your whole lifestyle. Glade candles, anything scented in your house, get it out. Eat holistically, completely change your diet. If, it's, if it doesn't grow or eat something that grows, don't eat it. You know, shop the perimeter of the grocery store, have you ever heard of that? But you know, like basically if it doesn't grow in the earth, you know, plants, fruit, vegetables, don't eat them, right? So she completely changed it. She did go on a more organic uh, diet and she came to, to an event that I had, this is like I said, it was about 10 years ago. And she was pretty upset. You know, like obviously this is, she's, she's trying everything. This is, you know, very important to her. And I, I took her through kind of our line and explained it all to her. And I got a call from her about a year later when she was pregnant. So it can, you can go to, it goes to show that if you completely change your lifestyle, your body, for example, from a pregnancy perspective, your body wants to do what you want your body to do, but your body's only going to be able to do what it's healthy enough to do. Right? So a lot of times it's not to say, oh, that person just can't get pregnant there might be a lot of other reasons. You know, if your body's toxic, if you've got a lot of, you know, just 
toxicity in your blood and you haven't, like, or you meet people that do a detox, but their detox is eating healthy and going to the gym, but yet they're still using conventional skincare products that are gonna completely contradict. It's like going to the gym and eating, eating McDonald's on the way home. Like, you know, it's why not go to the gym and eat some fruit, fruits and veggies and actually back up, you know, your efforts, right? Um, but she, she, she spent about a year completely detoxing her body properly. And, and now she does that too, because she actually works for our company now, which is great because you know she's obviously blown away by, by the results that she had, but it's really exciting to see that, um, that just because the medical industry says something doesn't mean that you know that's, that's just how it's gonna be. You know, a lot of times people get onto fertility drugs and stuff, when really all they need to do is just starting, start shopping the perimeter of the grocery store, starting to you know, eat healthy, drink good water, you know, use safe, personal care products and, 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 you know, a lot of these chemicals, you know, they, they say, they say, um, mimics estrogen and, and hormone disruptor and stuff. It does, you know, and if you were to ask big execs, I was at a big industry event where I was talking to someone from L'Oreal. I was not going to say a company, it doesn't matter. L'Oreal. And I'm like, one question I had was, just why do you guys use those types of ingredients? I mean, I know why you use it. You use it because you want to be able to mass produce. You want to have a long shelf life. You want to make stuff cheap. Like I get it, but really, like, is there not a bit of ethical, you know, approach here, like at all? And their answer is, we don't use enough of it to really affect. You know, we use low doses. But if you think about it, and this is one thing I said, I'm like, yeah, but your your clients are applying this twice a day, every day with three other products that you sell at the same time. So yeah, maybe one is a small dose, but if you're, if you're using a, you know, personal care products that are not safe, multiple products twice a day, you know, think about that. Think about that when you get into your, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, and, and so on, or just even in your 20s and 30s, for heaven's sakes, you know? Um, if it you can't put it in your mouth, don't put it on your face. Don't put it on your skin. This, I already kind of talked a little bit about it. So glass and plastic, right? The reason why most companies don't use glass is because it is expensive to ship, it's heavy, and it's also expensive to buy, right? Um, it's also, you know, glass is obviously more environmentally friendly, you can recycle it, so it is, it is the, better, the better approach. There is, okay, so vitamin A, I'm gonna try to skip long because I know I get talking on you guys. What time is it? Okay, cool. So vitamin A. So vitamin A helps with things like fine lines, naturally toning the skin as well. And you'll see here, root vegetables, leafy greens, fish, those are all aspects of vitamin A, which are really great because a lot of times people say like, I have a really great diet. You know, I eat really well. Why do I have to worry about what I put on my skin? Your skin obviously is your largest organ, but it's also your outermost organ. So putting something that's concentrated with vitamins, minerals, enzymes topically on your skin is really important because it's a first, first come, first serve basis. So feeding your body internally, but then also using something topical. So we use things, yeah, no worries, take care, yeah. Uh, lemongrass and also nettle extracts, different herbs, for example, have vitamin A in them. So we use a variety of different uh, herbs that, that do help um, and, and, and essential oils that do help, you know, with vitamin A concentration to help with things like fine lines and such. Vitamin C, um, a lot of people think that vitamin C causes photosynthesis on the skin, right? It's actually not the case. What it is, and I actually have this written down because it's a, it's a hard word to explain, but it, it says cit citropentine, which is actually found in lemon and lime. So vitamin C actually helps with sunspotting. Vitamin C helps to stimulate, um, helps to prevent uh, sunspotting and helps with you know, reversing it. If, it. if it's extracted from things like sweet orange, apricot kernel, and if it's not a sorbic acid, it's actually raw vitamin C. Um, vitamin C also helps to stimulate collagen, which helps to improve the elasticity of the skin as well. Um, and can also help with people with acne prone skin as well. And there's vitamin E as well. I'll try to skip through a couple things here for you guys. Um, obviously, like I mentioned, at, at Skin Source Organics, we, we, we believe that you know if you want to have great skin, you got to use great ingredients, right? Cold pressed, unrefined, certified organic, capturing basically nature in a bottle. Um, but it also is the healthy lifestyle. Like I mentioned earlier, obviously drinking water, having a great diet, exercising, so sweating. If someone has acne issues or a lot of congestion on their skin, it is really important that you know if you have access to a gym or if you can have a really hot bath and have a deep, deep sweat, you know, once a week or a sauna, for example, to really get a deep sweat, that, that's one of the best ways to release toxins from your body. Um, so if you do have issues with your skin and, and, and you wanna help with just, just overall congestion that you might be getting or, or breakouts or the fact that, you know, your, your skin just easily gets 
gets clogged in your pores, getting a good deep sweat at least once or twice a week will make a big difference because you've you got things for like obviously pollution, but obviously uh, if you're using cream-based moisturizers, a buildup of like waxes and stuff in the epidermis, so it's good to sweat it out. Um, and obviously drinking lots of water is important. There's, there's a video, actually if you guys write this down, you might wanna um, just even watch it later rather than take your time to watch it now. It's called, if you're on YouTube, it's called The Story of Cosmetics. And it takes like eight minutes, but it talks about the industry in general. Yeah, or take a picture of it, there you go. Move it for you. Uh, the, the Story of Cosmetics. So it's a kind of a cartoon that's been put together that explains the industry, how it works, how it's kind of governed, and, and I, I think it's worth it. If you watch it for eight, I think it's an eight minute video, it's definitely, it's definitely worth it. So it's called The Story of Cosmetics. You can find it on YouTube. Um, and have you guys ever heard of EWG? Yeah. Environmental Working Group, yeah, have you ever used it? Yeah, okay. So long story short, EWG, for those of you that don't know, you can go on, it's, an, it's called, it's the Environmental Working Group. It's a database that you can go on to actually rate your personal care products. So you can go in a search engine on it, and in the search, type in a product that you're using, and it will grade it on a scale of one being the best, 10 being the dirtiest. So for example, companies like Aveda end up between four and a six with carcinogens and things like that. So they're really not that pure, but it actually helps you to understand labels and understand what's safe and what's not. We're proudly number number one on all of our products, obviously, uh, but yeah. That's what I was just gonna ask is what you rated. Number one, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're literally like cold pressed, unrefined, certified organic, no water, no chemicals, no preservatives. Yeah, we have the best rating. Um, and that site isn't funded by? No, it's actually a non-for-profit organization out of the United States that's completely unbiased. To be honest with you, most companies don't want to be on it. Yeah. Because it calls them for what they are, right, right. right? And the thing is too, it doesn't just say, oh, this company gets, or this product gets a four, this product gets a five. It'll explain to you why, exactly. So it'll say like, like, what types of you know chemicals and preservatives or harmful ingredients. It even talks about stuff that might be harmful to the environment like the oceans and stuff like that too. Like it really, it hits a lot of different angles. So it's worth looking at for sure. Um, do you guys have any questions about like our product line at all? It's funny because this talk could actually be, I, I find myself feeling rushed to get through it because it could easily be a three hour talk if I, if I really compartmentalize it properly, but I, I won't do that to you, don't worry.